Hello Sea Wolves, just a quick update as we're really getting very very close to uh, the finish uh, right now. Jump with me uh, into the screen uh, here, it's getting really really cool. I'm gonna jump back and forth between the um, official uh, map and the Windy app because in here we have actually the finish and uh, here unfortunately that is not uh, uh, displayed but uh, I can of course uh, uh, you know draw it in so we have a little bit an idea of where the finish actually is so that's roughly uh, there and uh, right now Charlie Dalin who's definitely made it very comfortably to the front of the fleet um, on this particular tracker it's saying 80.5 uh, nautical miles away but actually when we uh, access the data on the official map it says 56.4 nautical miles so 104 kilometers distance to the finish so between the two apps it's a little bit different i don't know if it's a delay in the data um, but anyway that's the uh, uh, latest uh, uh, on that and that means that uh, uh, Charlie has been doing an average uh, speed uh, of about 19.1 knots over the last four hours. He's doing 21.0 knots right now. He's going really, really fast. And uh, as you can see in the windy map, uh, he's having really good speed. A part of what I talked about yesterday kind of uh, came true in the sense that I said that the winds on the downside of the Bay of Biscay are often rather shifty. So that's kind of where uh, Boris is. So Charlie went. Um, you know a little bit earlier in there but we see that Boris though he was uh, quite a bit closer uh, earlier to Charlie uh, than Lewis here uh, you know kind of caught in the in the lower route uh, you know had to do another uh, jibe I guess to uh, get a bit more wind and get on the right track for the uh, uh, finish and um, I guess lost some miles with uh, now kind of the scenario that I talked about later where we're going to see Lewis and then Thomas and Yannick and Boris more or less converge on the finish at the same time. So I think that those, uh, those four are all going to get really, really close uh, uh, to each other. Charlie, however, a lot uh, uh, closer and basically on a straight path uh, to the finish. So really, really cool. Uh, to see he's on a good course, so he's basically going to get there. He's not, you know, uh, he's not really going that high. He's basically falling, sailing downwind now, but he has perfect wind to round up into the finish. So, um, you know, no, no uh, direction changes or tacks or jibes or anything like that needed for him. So he has more or less a four-ish hour race to uh, the finish uh, right in front of him. So that is really, really cool. And so very likely four hours from now, we're going to see Charlie Dalin, uh, at least as far as the sailing part goes, uh, win this incredible uh, race. Then right behind there, so that's not taking into account uh, the time allotments, obviously. Then we have uh, the, the unexpected thing that I talked about yesterday. Like I said, I think Lewis Burton, uh, you know, was actually my favorite. I thought he might actually uh, win this, but I guess Charlie did actually uh, manage uh, uh, to get ahead. And so uh, we see Lewis now, you know, really quite firmly uh, in second place. He'll probably have to make one more jibe in order to also set his course really for the finish. So we keep going more or less until he, uh, I can draw it out for you actually. So. He'll most likely keep going until he kind of reaches uh, the place where, where Charlie is and then he will, you know, round up and, uh, and go towards there uh, also, most likely. And more or less the same thing, so we see both Thomas and Yannick both a little bit higher. So they can more or less, oh damn, I lost the thing here, lines uh, here where we have both gens. So they are, they are both kind of on a line that brings them very close already uh, to the finish, which uh, once again is more or less here. So uh, yeah, they can probably both, you know, take a, take a straight line there and, uh, and they probably won't have to make a single attack or jibe. Distance wise, they are not, uh, their, their distance to the finish is not far different from uh, what Boris is doing now, so they're basically about 50 miles and then another 30 miles behind Boris, but Boris might have a slightly uh, slower track up uh, because he'll be uh, not so much downwind sailing as, uh, as the other two uh, guys. So like I said, I think that those three, so Boris, um, uh, Thomas Ruyant and Yannick, might come into the finish really quite uh, close to each other, maybe with five to 10 nautical miles uh, in between. And uh, in the next four hours, we will, I think, definitely see uh, Charlie 
finish first and then uh, Lewis. And then when we know the exact uh, time differences, we'll get a real idea for uh, what the actual final stance on the distance is. Last thing I wanted to talk to in this you know, kind of short update right now is uh, Jean Le Camp's position. So uh, again, like I said yesterday, he shaved another 100 or so nautical miles, even a little bit more. Off of the uh, off of his uh, uh, distance so that he was kind of behind, so he's 431 nautical miles uh, behind uh, the leaders uh, right now, and so um, yeah, he's. I think he will keep uh, gaining a little bit, but uh, obviously with 430 miles, that is quite a bit more than uh, the 16 and a half hours that he has uh, allotted, which you know roughly translates to about. 200 nautical miles maybe at best so um, you know depending of course on what speed uh, he is going at and what the rest of the field is going at but i think that uh, uh, in the end with the distance now it looks that jean le cam probably will land on a very uh, solid fourth or maybe well fifth i would say probably fifth maybe uh, fourth position you know counting with uh, uh, the time uh, allotment. So all in all very exciting uh, uh, stuff happening. Like I said quick update and uh, we'll do uh, the first live Sea Wolves I guess. We're all toast together at the finish which I think uh, uh, will be fun. So that's it just for the short because I know that you're all at home of course keeping track of the uh, tracker looking what's happening. So uh, probably four hours maybe a little bit more depends of course a little bit on the wind. Uh, as Charlie is getting closer to the coast the wind is going to go down a little bit so his speed might go uh, a little bit down also there so it might be a little bit longer at the beginning of the day I thought it would probably be seven in the morning in next morning but uh, he seems to have really gone very very fast with an average of 21 knots now so a little bit earlier so like I said four or five hours from now uh, and you know if if they get within like an hour of the finish or something I'll just move up the live to whatever time we need to be online so uh, um, you can already find it in the uh, in the YouTube channel you'll see that the live is available there you can already chat there and everything so uh, let's have a nice time and I'll be ready with the toast when we're getting uh, towards the finish talk to you in a little bit enjoy the day and uh, see you soon